Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Today I thought I would do a 30 to 34 week pregnancy update. Apologies if there's any background noise or anything like that. I have the window open. I'm wearing a jumper, but I'm too hot. Logic. The reason I'm wearing this is because I actually don't have a bra on. Ladies, yeah, you understand me. Sometimes you just don't want to wear a bra. Anywho. <laughs> So in the last four weeks, I have really, really started to feel the pressure on my body with this pregnancy and I am exhausted. I feel like the last four weeks have just been an effort and they've not been the easiest of weeks, that's for sure. So when I last updated, I was at like 30-ish weeks. Things were kind of okay. She was sideways, she was lying sideways, and unfortunately, she is still lying sideways. At least she was last week. I've got um, another week or so until my next midwife appointment, so I'm still trying to get her to turn. And every now and then, I feel like she might have turned, but then she'll just sort of, it feels like she goes back to where her comfy spot is. So I'm doing all of the things. I'm bouncing on the ball. I am going upside down and doing like inversions over the edge of the sofa. I am sitting with like my legs crossed but wide so my hips are open. Like I'm doing everything I can to make that a more easy space for her to get into. Alongside doing all of these things, I also have now started feeling some really tough SBD pain. Um, I don't know whether that's just because of the general time that it is. So like your body starts producing relax it, relaxing, relaxing, I can't quite remember, but your body produces this hormone or this, this thing that, makes all of your muscles and your bones and everything in that area of you relax and kind of start it it's basically described as your your pubic bone starts to kind of loosen and separate a little bit um getting ready for labor but i won't be giving birth like that if she doesn't turn head down so unfortunately i'm dealing with a lot of pain and the only way i can explain it if you've never experienced sbd pain which I hadn't with scalp, I had no pain like this whatsoever with scalp. But imagine your pubic bone at the front and it just feels like someone is pulling and like wanting to break it open at the very front. It is horrific, I hate it. Every now and then it'll go off and I feel a little bit of relief. Heat really, really helps with that. So I do end up sitting with a hot water bottle between my legs, which is really bizarre, but it, it helps. But when that pain kicks in, there is nothing else. It's just, it's horrible. So I've been dealing with a lot of that, which means I've also been trying to rest as much as I can in between doing all these active things to try and get her to move. And if I'm quite honest, I'm getting so tired of the constant, which position is she in? Is she in the right position yet? how's this gonna end up going? Because when I spoke to my midwife last week, um, I asked how, how long have I got to get her to move? And she said, well, at the next appointment, which is next week, if she still feels like she hasn't moved much, then I'd probably need to go in for a scan to find out her exact positioning and then maybe be referred on to the hospital for then more options as to what we can do, the likelihood of her moving if she hasn't already if she hasn't already moved is probably quite slim. I know they can move right at the very end, but if she hasn't moved and I'm at 35, 36 weeks, I think at this point I would rather just book in for a scheduled C section, know when it's gonna happen and be prepared because you do not want to go into labour with a sideways transverse baby. It's just quite, from what I've read, it's quite dangerous for mum and baby. And you can risk things like an umbilical, um, what's the word? Prolapse? 
I don't know if that's the right word, but basically if your waters break, the umbilical cord can come out first because baby's head isn't blocking the cervix at all and it's just kind of like a free-for-all. And if baby's umbilical cord comes out first or anything else for that matter, it can be really, really dangerous for both you and baby. So I would rather just be prepared. So within the next week or so, she hasn't moved, we will kind of know somewhat of a course of action like at the start of a course of an action as to where we're going to be going when it comes to labour anyway so she's been quite a good baby up until this point it's been a very easy I want to say easy pregnancy is never really easy but it's been an easy pregnancy and I've been low risk all the way through and now right at the very end she wants to be really really stubborn Stubborn is the word I'm going to use. <laughs> we will see on how it actually turns out. You never know, it might get to next week and my midwife will turn around to me and say, right, she's head down, she's turned, she's good to go. And I don't even know. I haven't got much of a preference anymore as to what I would hope for. Originally, I didn't want a C-section because there is a six week at least a six week healing period. You can't drive after a C-section. It would make things with scout and start in school much more difficult. I don't know. And then obviously with everything that happened with scouts labor, there's that kind of side of going for a natural labor that scares me as well. And it's very, not risky because it might not even happen again, but you know that that I know that there's things that can happen in a natural labor um like a vaginal birth that could go wrong and I've lived through that so either or there's pros and cons to both so we'll just see what happens so apart from that I have been dealing with insane heartburn I don't think it really matters what I'm eating when I'm eating it I'm getting heartburn pretty much every night and once again I've just remembered that we went to a shop this morning and I forgot to buy Rennie's. <sighs> My memory is gone. <laughs> um, but yes, heartburn is just my best friend. It is my best friend and um, we're living a grand old life together. <laughs> Nighttime's really difficult to sleep because you have to sleep, they say to sleep on a specific side for like maximum blood flow through your uterus and your placenta and everything. But it's like the opposite side to which you should lie on to ease heartburn. So mm, that's a bit tricky. I am hoping that it is true that heartburn equals hair and that she'll come out with lots of hair like they showed us on her scan anyway. So that would be nice, but we'll see. And the only other things that really stand out for me from the past sort of three, four weeks have been the fact that I'm still really hot, even though the weather has cooled down a lot. It has rained, there has been clouds and wind. It's still really muggy, but no matter what the weather does, I am warm. So I've kind of just gotten used to this really middle state of like warmth. Like my face is always warm. I always, I never want to wear trousers. I just, I'm, I don't ever want to wear trousers at the moment. It's just too, too much. And um, yeah, I'm just constantly warm and warm. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, just warm. I'm always warm. I also am incredibly moody. Um, I've been very up and down uh, recently and sometimes I don't know why. I never have a reason to be so angry. But recently I have been so grumpy and it'll go from I'm fine one minute to I'm seething the next. My hormones must be going absolutely nuts because I'm just like this with my like grumpiness at the moment and I really hope that it passes before I have to give birth otherwise that could make for a very interesting labour. And that's probably the only other big pregnancy symptom update that I've had recently. Um, I do feel like she's grown an awful lot. I'm, I'm measuring on track, completely on track, and we're heading towards a good-sized baby. Scout was 7.13, so we, we're going up to where at least he was, if not a little bit bigger, and I do feel huge. I'm very uncomfortable. 
and the two things that I do not want to wear. The trousers, like I mentioned, because I'm always hot. Um, also, I can't deal with waistbands. And bras, which I mentioned at the very beginning, I just, as soon as I get home, the bra has to come off because even though she is lying sideways for the most part, I feel so big and rounded at the top up by my boobs that when I'm wearing a bra, that extra pressure of the bra around me just makes my ribs hurt so much and just taking my bra off gives a massive sense of relief. So my bras are probably a little bit too tight, but at this stage of my pregnancy, I really don't want to have to buy any more right now. And I know that once I have given birth and I've not got a huge bump, like a boulder sitting up by my chest, um, my bras will probably fit a lot easier after that. Um, so I don't really wanna go and spend the money when I've only got a few weeks left. So I guess I will show you the bump. You will have to excuse the fact that I am wearing a green jumper, purple shorts, and I have no bra on. Okay, flattering belly angle. <laughs> uh, things aren't gonna fit for much longer, that's for sure. So we have one big belly. <laughs> she has grown so much. You can see how high up she is. You can still see like the shadow of my oh, of my bump here. And then also here, just about, she's just about keeping shape. But yeah, all my stretch marks have started to definitely move up furthermore. And I think my belly button is probably gonna stretch out a little bit soon because I'm starting to feel a little bit push to my limits around the old middle section, but that is the belly at 34 and four days. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope really well. I'm gonna probably do another one at 36 weeks and um, fill you guys in on the situation with her positioning and labor plans and everything else. I also plan on doing a nursery room reveal in the next week or two and yeah, I'm getting very tired, but here we are. We've got six-ish weeks, eight maximum, and I'm done. If you're watching this video and you're around the same point in your pregnancy as me, how are you feeling? Because I'm just, I think I've hit my point of no return now. I think I'm just ready to have this baby. So how are you guys feeling if you are watching this? and you're at the same point. Do you still feel good? Or are you at the same point as I am? I'd love to know in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and hit the subscribe button if you are new to this channel. I will see you again on Sunday with a new weekly vlog. Hope you're really well. I'm boiling my butt off, as per usual. I'll see you soon. Bye guys.